So um, on to one of our new segments then, Mag. So we, we're going to be looking at uh, what's really grinding my gears, what's grinding our gears, what's getting us hot under the collar, what's getting us kind of all kind of, you know, sweaty palms, just kind of fed up with uh, what you're seeing on your TV screens, a certain wrestler, a certain promotion, a certain angle, what's kind of really getting getting under your, under your uh, collar, what's grinding your gears. So this is kind of one of our new segments. And uh, I'm, I'm going to go first on this one, if that's OK. And what, what I've got, and uh, I, I, I think you're going to hate me for this, but uh, <laughs> what's grinding my gears at the moment is the AEW women's division. Now, I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a few reasons why. Firstly, Ryu, the current women's champion, she's not really done it for me, to be honest with you. I think she's quite bland. Uh, she looked very ordinary in the backstage segment when she was powerbombed through the table by Nyla Rose this week. Uh, the, the booking of Britt Baker, I think, has been been awful um I, I i've kind of become a bit more intrigued by Rip breaker because of her heel turn um but I, I i think that she's been handled quite poorly to be honest with you considering she was the face of the women's division when it was first launched um uh, over a year ago the fan reaction to many of the women's matches are quite muted in my opinion i just don't think the fans are really into it the storylines in the women's division have been all over the place, in my opinion, with with the Nightmare Collective uh, getting involved in various matches, to Brandy then coming out as the as the babyface wife of Cody this Wednesday when he was being lashed. So is she a heel? Is she a babyface? There's so much kind of conflict there. Um, you had Chris Statlander, who was the, kind of the hot new thing, you know, 2019 leading into the new year. Now they, she's nowhere to be seen. Uh, you know, when you compare the women's division of NXT to the women's division of AEW, it's really night and day, in my opinion, you know, between one company who have exciting storylines with wrestlers that are over a, a la NXT compared to AEW, um, you know, who are struggling to make sense of what they have. And in my opinion, Nyla Rose is kind of the, the biggest bright spot in the AEW women's division. And, and Chris Statlander as well, if she was handled correctly, or if we, maybe we saw her uh, more regularly. Uh, but I think that Chris Statlander, Nyla Rose are definitely the kind of the big things that you need to focus on going forward. But I think everything up until now has been a bit been a bit meh to be honest with you and uh it's grinding my gears that i, I just think that the matches just haven't been that great and i think ryu's been quite a poor champion um so that's what's grinding my gears any thoughts on that uh max well i, th- I think you should uh stop recording podcasts and, and never ever speak bad about women's wrestling ever ever again <laughs> no I th- you make you make some absolutely uh absolutely Perfect point. Uh, I am a fan of Rio as a, a wrestler, but uh, one of my biggest arguments was the fact that she, no, we didn't know about her. We didn't know who she was. We didn't know why she was uh, the person to to be the face of, of the women's division. Uh, all we all we got, especially from the commentary team, was she weighs ninety pounds. She weighs ninety pounds. Um, mm-hmm. I don't believe that uh, uh, as a wrestling company you should be like almost forced out to go and research on your own to find out about a character. I feel that that's the job of the company to 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 get the fans invested in that person. And with especially with the women's division, they've kind of struggled to do that with not just Rio but with multiple uh, wrestlers. Um, like you said, Chris Statlander came in as the hot thing, and she's now kind of faded away. We had a, a big push for Big Swall, uh, and that's kind of like gone off the boil a little bit. So yeah, I do kind of agree with you. I think they're making amends, like you said, with um, with the Britt Baker heel turn, and with maybe the Nightmare Collective kind of going away because that story was like a, a fart in church. Uh, I don't think anybody. Uh, really, really was enjoying it. It just kind of didn't make sense, and there was too many kind of uh, dark order style factions going on at one time that it, it was it was getting very, very lost in the shuffle. Uh, so I think you're 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 perfectly fine in in that brand <laughs> of years. To be fair, uh, that's very, very acceptable to me. Thank you very much. Well, uh, <laughs> what, what, what's grinding your gears at the moment then, Max? What's really kind of getting you hot under the collar and getting you angry about the wrestling business at the moment? For me, um, the, the main thing is not actually anything to do with the the wrestling directly. It's it's wrestling Twitter. It's wrestling social media. Uh, this, as much as I enjoy this Wednesday night war, or in our case, Thursday night uh, tussle, however you'd like to call it. Uh, as much as I'm enjoying the, the programming, I'm really not enjoying the the kind of uh, 
toxicity that we're getting, especially on wrestling Twitter. I mean, I don't have Facebook, so I don't know how it kind of is uh, being portrayed over there. But uh, this week, it kind of came to like a bit of a head. Uh, there's a, a very popular wrestling um, fan called uh, Amy Phoenix and NJPW, and she put out this uh, really heartfelt post about how the Cody um, Lashes uh, segment was really like speaking to her. And she was really like impressed with how it went down and how emotionally invested she got in it. And the, the amount of people coming out of the woodwork to kind of attack this 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 woman for being happy about enjoying a wrestling program it's kind of it was like the, the almost the nail in the coffin for for wrestling social media that you you're now attacking somebody for enjoying a pro uh, a product rather than someone coming out and absolutely like shitting on a product for, mm -hmm. You're now attacking somebody for for saying what they enjoyed about it, and it's kind of getting to the point where people are just attacking for the sake of attacking and not kind of like giving their own input. Just they just want to to look down on someone, and and that really does grab me because the whole point of social media and the whole point of the reason why I kind of got involved in wrestling Twitter was for the conversations about wrestling. I yes. don't agree with. I don't agree with many, many people's viewpoints out there, but I do like to talk about wrestling. I do like to explain my viewpoint. I like to listen to other people's viewpoints and have a real, like, almost adult conversation about it. And we're getting to the stage now where it's it's literally name-calling for name-calling sake, and I really don't don't like that. I mean, I know Amy uh, personally. She's a, a really, really positive person in, in general and... Um, I think she does so much good for this for this wrestling community, and and she absolutely got she got rinsed over the calls. And then I think another another one called uh, Tiffany, who I'm not I'm not as familiar with, but she's a really uh, impassioned um, Cody fan, and she again got absolutely rinsed over the calls because she enjoyed a wrestling product, and it kind of it baffles me how yeah. you can get get so much grief for enjoying something. It really yeah. so yeah that that grinds my gears. I think social media kind of needs to have a word of itself and and kind of get to grips of why why attack someone for enjoying something. I just don't I just don't understand it at all. Yeah, and like you said, you could have different opinions. You know, we've all have different opinions as wrestling fans. We all think you know one thing's better than the other, or or prefer one thing over the other. But be constructive, you know, in your conversation. Be constructive in your argument. And uh, to be honest with you, the the guy that that, that criticised, um, you know, the 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 the, um, the Twitter person you mentioned, but it, it's probably got nothing better to do with his day. To be honest with you, and I think the best thing to do is just to kind of block that person person and forget about it but yeah like I say if you're gonna get into a debate about one thing over another be constructive you know be friendly towards one another at the end of the day we're all meant to be wrestling fans uh yeah. not wrestling kind of not wrestling enemies and exactly. um you know I, I think it, it, it's yeah there's just one thing to do there and just block the individual and kind of yeah but there's no need to be spiteful or kind of uh to attack anybody and and, and Unfortunately, wrestling Twitter has actually, you know, got to some people where they've just quit Twitter altogether or yeah. given it a break for a few weeks. You know, I know one or two individuals uh, that have, have given Twitter a break because of how um, upsetting some of the interactions can be on which, Twitter, which, Facebook. It, yeah, which go totally goes along, uh, goes against the whole point of, of it. The, 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 the key word is social. The key word is yeah. is to, to be social, to have these conversations and now people are, are, are scared to put their opinion out in case they're going to be set up on by the dogs. I mean, yeah. uh, I, I experienced it uh, quite a few years ago when uh, I made a comment about Roman Reigns um, not being the second coming of, of, of wrestling. And I got uh, I got some pretty bad hate that I was getting death threats in my uh, DMs and stuff like that. Um, but it seems to have like gone up another notch. I mean, we, we're getting people being harassed so much that their account to be suspended uh, because they're being like mass reported by these groups of people who, who just, if you don't agree with their their opinion and you are you're willing to put that opinion out there, they they just harangue you, and it's just I don't see the point. I don't see the fun in that. And wrestling, it's it's entertainment at the end of the day. It's meant to be fun. And yeah. if you can't come on on Twitter and and say your opinion without fear of of getting abused over it, then what is the point? 
Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, let's be nice to one another. If we if we're wrestling friend uh, fans, then let's kind of band together. And if you're going to have a conversation or an argument over over something, if you've got a different opinion to somebody, then let's be constructive about it and let's not attack one another. It's just not not good, not good, guys and girls. But uh, d- d- conversely, let's have a look at what's floating your boat, then, Mag. So t- tell us what's floating your boat at the, bo- at the moment regarding wrestling, the wrestling business, and uh, or, or or anything in general, wrestlers promotions shows what's kind of got your interest and what's really turning you on to wrestling at the moment yeah well to to go on the flip side of, of the point i made of what's grand my what floats my boats is talking to guys like yourself yeah. um it's if, like I, I mentioned earlier it's when we have these big events so, as a, as a community of, of content creators, we kind of band together and we start putting out all these content. I love seeing uh, people who I have uh, spoken to or people who I've collaborated with. I love to see them collaborating with other people and we, we're kind of all spreading our podcast and content wings. Uh, and mm. yeah, that's really fun to see. Uh, in terms of actual wrestling though, I'm absolutely loving this uh, uh, Adam Cole and um, Tomasa Champa feud. I, I I just, I think they are two of the best characters in wrestling today. Obviously, uh, Tomasa Champa is just his character work is absolutely on point. If you want to learn how to portray a character in wrestling, there's no one better to to kind of look at and emulate. And then Adam Cole is the most over person in in at least in the WWE sphere, uh, maybe possibly in the world. And yeah, it's just, I'm so excited for Portland. I, I usually get excited for NXT takeovers as a rule anyway, but I'm especially excited for this because we we just don't know where where this takes the undisputed era afterwards. Mm, exactly. Now we do have a a, a question from uh, one of our friends on Twitter that will kind of help us maybe answer some of this, and we'll kind of ask it at the very end of the show regarding undisputed era and where they you know might stand after takeover with regards to the the championships that they still hold. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it, I got to echo your sentiments there, especially regarding the collaborations and the the friends that I've made um, through doing this podcast and you know doing collaborations with wonderful people wonderful content creators like yourself and so many others i mean i think on our episode 100 which we did um last weekend i think it was uh kind of harking back to i think i've probably had maybe over 30 maybe 40 guest hosts that have come on the podcast in the in the 100 episodes that have kind of you know that i've connected through twitter and connected through facebook and kind of searched out their podcasts and got in touch and they you know just like yourself been been friendly and it's kind of made it all worth while and you feel like you've kind of made another friend really although on the end of a a phone line or a skype call or you know a dm and uh you know it it really does help to kind of promote the wrestling kind of podcast uh genre really uh because of of course whenever i'm on your show you'll you'll promote me and vice versa um and you know it really does help to kind of share the share the love and share the positive vibes completely conversely to what you were saying earlier on of course but uh, i think the, the the podcast community the wrestling podcast community is quite strong out there to be honest with you we do all band together we do kind of support and boost each other's posts and um yeah and uh, i think that's been kind of one of the really standout positive things for me since i started the podcast and i probably would have you know had second thoughts about doing it quite a long time ago if i didn't have the support and kind of the guests come on board and be very positive about the whole podcast experience experience and being on the wrestling with Jonas podcast so yeah big thumbs up to the um the wrestling podcast community out there so many names i wouldn't want to mention kind of just one or two because like i said there's been probably over 30 that i've collaborated with in the year or so but uh, uh definitely you know having people like yourself on the pod- podcast is always a pleasure and always a massive highlight of my week so uh, thank you mags and couldn't echo your sentiments anymore there to be honest with you definitely um what's really floating my boat at the moment was got a really fun th- thumbs up for me uh, we spoke about him earlier, um, and I've got to say, this guy is just doing it for me all over, and that's MJF. Um, <laughs> you know, he continues to be the cockiest, most hated heel in the business. Um, I, I love the the kind of the conditions or the stipulations set out by MJF. Um, you know, before Cody can even lay a finger on MJF, leading up to their match at Rev- uh, Revolution at the end of this month. Uh, Chris Jericho, you know, might be in many people's eyes their favourite heel, but in my opinion, he's 
he acts like a heel, but he's loved like a baby face. So I don't think he can really be compared to MJF as a, as a really kind of hated, despised heel, which I believe MJF is. Um, you look at MJF with his, you know, he's MJF 24-7. Um, kayfabe, being, being his character, is what he lives and dies by 24-7. If you're out in the street and you bump into him at, at an airport, even on the Jericho cruise, at the arenas, um, he, he, he doesn't break character. You know, it, 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 he's got a face you just want to punch. Um, <laughs> and and it, it, he's been the perfect foil for Cody Rose, you, you know, with, with this excellent storyline. Um, and I think he was the best thing on this week's AEW, to be honest with you. Like you say, the way he was kind of, you know, being cocky and jovial during the first couple of lashes. And then he got all serious and, you know, he became the mean spirited heel that you just uh, love to hate. So the, the, the 10 lashes segment on this week's uh, Dynamite, um, I think, was, was the best TV that I've seen on a wrestling show in a long time. Um, and I hate MJF even more following this segment, following the lashes segment than I did beforehand. Um, every, every Everything about that segment was amazing, um, and I'm even more uh, invested in their feud, even more invested in their match at Revolution. And all I want to see is Cody beat the living daylights out of MJF, and and uh, that's all down to uh, and, and thanks to who I believe is the best heel in the business at the moment, MJF. MJF is definitely floating my boat right now, and uh, this week with his actions on Dynamite definitely cemented that. So, uh, your thoughts on MJF and what I had to say about him? Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I think uh, if you if you want someone who lives their character, who knows how to uh, to be that person twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, MJF has got that down on point. I remember seeing a tweet by him a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was he uh, was replying to a, a fan who was in a wheelchair. Who uh, I think they'd asked him <laughs> yeah. it, they'd asked him for a picture or something like that, and he and he put in his in his uh, reply, "I'll be the bigger man and I'll walk away." And it's just that kind of brutalness, that kind of like no filter on whatever he's got to say. It's just he, yeah, he plays that heel character to perfection, and I think it was kind of like the almost like the cool heel when we first uh, when we first. Like got him on in AEW uh, uh, when he was at All In and he was uh, calling like uh, Hangman Page Sea Biscuit and stuff like that. It was kind of like the cool, funny heel. But I think this feud with uh, with uh, Corder, obviously with Corder being possibly the biggest babyface in all of wrestling today, it's yeah. really cemented uh, the fact that MJF knows how to play a, a dastardly heel, a really evil heel. And yeah, I think is uh, is like I said, his his heel work is. It's absolutely on point. Yeah, really, really is. But um, there we go. So that's that's the end of our kind of our, our new segments. Uh, what's grinding your gears and what's floating your boat? Um, I thought we we kind of touched on some quite interesting topics there, and that's something that we'll be doing every single week going forward um, as a as a discussion point more than anything. Something is a, a bit of fun as well. 